243, you need a unit here, that's Parkville. Multiple victims, you need an ambulance to They would have fucking ripped him in America. On he April would have been 23rd, shredded. 2018, an individual by the name of Alec Manassian drove a white Chevrolet Express van around Toronto, Canada, striking and killing 10 people and injuring 16. A police officer eventually intercepted the van and confronted the driver, Manassian, and arrested him. It was reported multiple times that Manassian tried to provoke the officer into using deadly force by repeatedly pulling a dark object from his pocket and pointing it at him, most likely in the hopes that the officer would discharge his firearm. However, it soon became clear to the officer that Manassian was not carrying a firearm, and he was put under arrest and interrogated. The term, for the chatter who was wondering, is called suicide by cop. Of course, because it's in Canada, I guess it doesn't work like that like it would in America, where it's damn near 100%, but in Canada, it's uh, clearly not 100%. ...a short time later. However, before we get into what led to this tragic attack from Alec Manassian, we need to understand the motivations of another disturbed man by the name of Elliot Roger. And before we understand Elliot Roger, we need to understand what an incel is. Wikipedia defines incel or involuntary celibate this way. Members of an online subculture who define themselves as unable to find a romantic or sexual partner despite desiring one. Essentially, an incel is a male who wants to have a girlfriend, wants to have sex, wants to have a romantic relationship, but by their own perception, those things are unattainable for them. As a result, they blame women for not being attracted to them, or, alternatively, for being attracted to other, non-incel men. This blame can also be put on other men who incels feel are more attractive than them, therefore acquiring more attention from the opposite sex, often referred to as chads. This viewpoint can result in an incel being bitter and angry primarily towards women, which naturally can make them less likely to get a romantic relationship and the prophecy becomes self-fulfilling. Guys congregate and there's ongoing conversations every single day with people all over the world. And a lot of incels are really obsessed with their looks. Oh my God. That dude's fucking, oh my God, that dude's uh, it, name was world. Monka Giga. A lot that's a fucking, that's literally a Twitch viewer, dude. That's literally a Twitch viewer. Oh my fucking God, of course. Oh fucking course, dude. A lot of incels are really obsessed with their looks. And I think it's kind of gives us a nice window into the rejection and the depression that some of the incels are really feeling. I think all men, deep down are really pissed off by women. Wish you all were dead. And they adopt this sort of fatalistic attitude that they are not genetically, genetically made in an attractive way for women and therefore are doomed to never find uh, intimacy. The subculture <clears throat> of incels has grown from a small forum where dateless individuals could share their experiences and ideas. I don't know what happened, but I do feel like this shit passed a little bit on the internet you know what i mean like 
it used to be i feel like it used to be worse overall like a lot of the circles that this shit used to pop off in have been like pushed away No, I just don't hear about it as much anymore. Dude, there used to be incels in this community all the fucking time, dude. Like, literally nonstop. We would have to ban people who just straight up would just say, like, the most psychotic shit. Incels, very similar to, like, Minecraft stands, have a very specific way of speaking. You know how you can, like, kind of catch on to the person, like, typing is, like, a Minecraft stand by the condescension? and uh patronizing attitude in their tone when they're educating you incels are like that as well they have like a definable obviously i'm not saying they're similar to one another but but there's certainly a way that incels fucking talk where like, it's, it's weird where, like, they'll say, I mean, females is one indicator, but, like, not always. It's, you have to look for context. But one way that you can, like, one defining thing is, like, the hyper-focus on, like, uh, the hyper-focus on, like, physical perception. Um, the... Fem cells are on the rise now. There are definitely fem cells for sure. Like they'll do like Chad phrenology. Like they definitely do some skull science. Why be constantly rejected by women you are attracted to when you can just beat the nameless king? It's better than sex. Right is on. Bottom of the hour. I already ran the ad. But yes, that's true. To almost a hate group against women. Many times they freely discuss violence against women who refuse to engage with them sexually or romantically, or violence against men who they feel are more attractive to women. Incels have their own terminology, their own ideology, and even more prominent incels that they look up to. Look at Elliot Rogers. Enter Elliot Roger. The, gen the Supreme Gentleman Elliot Rogers. I'll be a god, exacting my retribution. And all those who deserve it. Elliot Roger was born in London and moved to the United States with his parents when he was five years old, eventually being raised in Los Angeles. Throughout his life, he experienced consistent bullying, mockery, and beatings. He also showed signs of developmental and behavioral disorders despite never being formally diagnosed. As he got older, his bitterness and hate for those around him began to grow. His jealousy and anger toward women who he felt ignored him grew as well, leading to multiple violent incidents when he was an adolescent. In 2011, Roger threw coffee on a couple he was jealous of, and also threw coffee on two girls for not smiling at him. In July 2013, after being mocked at a party, Roger attempted to push a small group of girls off a 10-foot ledge. Roger's grievances were also well documented. In addition to having a YouTube channel where this motherfucker was the original car poster, dude. Like angry freaks posting from their cars, like literally the first He had a nice ass car too. Like, I mean, this dude was just, oh God, he was the fucking worst. Where he would post videos expressing his displeasure at what was going on in his life. He would also end up writing a 100,000 word manifesto entitled, My Twisted World. I was just about to say, the moment that you write a manifesto, it's a rap, dude. Again, self-report, vibe check failure, uh... A lighter, a much more, much lighter offense is having a six hour fucking debate in Discord about any particular grievance. But this is like the number one red flag of all red flags. Okay? Karl Marx, big red flag guy. But like, quite literally. Okay? It's true. I'm consistent, dude. The biggest of red flags. The story of Elliot Roger.
humanity dot 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 this motherfucker thinks he's an anime villain dude look at this humanity all of my suffering on this world has been at the hands of humanity particularly women like dude jesus christ dude wait what did he say least psychopathic sa andy yeah literally it's just like Dude, Death Note broke people's brains. Like, I swear to God. Everybody thinks, like, everybody thinks they're fucking El Light Yagami. Everyone. Motherfuckers read Death Note and go, oh, I'm Light Yagami. So stupid. The manifesto was filled with hateful, racist, and misogynistic language and ideas. The irony, of course, is that the, of course, the irony is that Light Yagami had a fucking goth girlfriend. Like, literally had a big titty goth girlfriend, dude. Which kind of, like, adds insult to his offenses. Because, like, he wasn't even a fucking incel. I had the biggest crush. What, whatever the fuck. Misa. Yeah. Such bullshit, dude. Shit, it made me an incel reading that, where I was like, fuck, I, I wish she was my girlfriend, dude. He didn't even want her. He ended up sending this manifesto to 34 people, his family, therapists, and classmates included. By this time, he had also purchased multiple firearms. On May 23rd, 2014, Roger killed three men, two of them being his roommate. Hold on. Is there any... ...by stabbing them numerous times in his apartment. He then went to a coffee shop, and then around 8.30 p.m. created his final video to his YouTube channel entitled Elliot Roger's Retribution, and uploaded it less than an hour later. Hi, Elliot Roger here. Well, this is my last video. It all has to come to this. Tomorrow is the day of retribution. The day in which I will have my revenge against humanity. Against all of you. God, it's like actual fucking shitty... Like, straight the Blu-ray villain type beat. Like, he literally thought he was so sick. And the worst part about it is, aside from the, the senseless cruelty, the brutality, the violence, is that all these other fucking annoying-ass nerds on the internet looked at this shit. All of those annoying fucking nerds who scoff at, like, video game writing because it's not good enough for them and their intellectual tastes and thought this guy was so sick. For the last eight years of my life, ever since I've hit puberty, I've been forced to endure an existence of loneliness, rejection, and unfulfilled desires, all because girls have never been attracted to me. Girls gave their affection and sex and love to other men, but never to me. Yeah, I wonder why, motherfucker. You come from a rich family. You're like a decently attractive dude. I wonder why girls didn't want to fuck you. Like, I wonder why. Entitled motherfucker, dude. Little piss shit. I'm 22 years old, and I'm still a virgin. I've never even kissed a girl. I've been through college for two and a half years. More than that, actually. And I'm still a virgin. That has been very torturous. College is the time when everyone experiences those things such as sex and fun and, and pleasure. But in those years, I've had to rot in loneliness. Like, think about it, dude. There's so much fucking... There's so much awful shit happening on the planet every fucking day poverty 
there's uh, epidemics occurring all around the world, okay? Global capitalism has is, is destroyed the fucking third world in endless amounts of exploitation. Like, there's, there's kids being born with fucking AIDS. And this motherfucker sitting in his, like, nice three, th uh, three series in the middle of Santa Barbara as the sun goes down, reveling in self-pity because he couldn't get coochie. Why couldn't he get coochie? He looked good. Okay, he was a decently looking dude. Has a nice car. He's, like, rich. Why couldn't he get coochie? Well, because this attitude, okay? Motherfucker had... He had main character syndrome... And was constantly and obsessively freaking out over the fact that he just could not get laid. So stupid, dude. It's not fair. Roger then drove to the Alpha... F Sorry, it was loud. ...by sorority house at Embarcadero where after failing to enter the sorority house itself, began shooting people nearby. He then went on a rampage, driving around town, shooting multiple people and striking others with his vehicle. What the fuck? At around 9.35 p.m. that evening, police found Roger's car with him inside, dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. In total, six people were killed by Roger and 14 others were injured from gunshot wounds or blunt trauma from his vehicle. From this incident sparked countless discussions on gun control, internet culture, and misogyny. To any sane- You should have hired a sex worker? No, dude. No, that's crazy. Why are you subjecting sex workers to his psychopathic nonsense? You should have- That was not going to fix his problems, dude. No, he, he was supposed to fucking work on self-improvement, okay? A fallen king? What? Here's the thing, guys. Confidence comes from within. That's why I always say, I know it sounds stupid, but like, I always tell you short-term goals and long-term goals, setting short-term, like, easily achievable goals for yourself that ultimately end up with, like, uh, ultimately end up with arriving at long-term goals that you have for yourself and building confidence from within, knowing that you can achieve goals that you've set for yourself. Like, these are some very simple ways that you can kickstart your, uh, you know, healing process, I guess. It's not going to happen. Like having sex with a sex worker is not going to magically change his like crippling insecurities. In rationally thinking person who hears about this case, Elliot Roger is a disturbed, depraved, hateful individual who took the bad experiences from his life and used them as justification to commit multiple murders. To some incels, however, Elliot Roger became something else a hero private recruitment ASEAN infantry 0010 wishing to speak to sergeant 4chan the incel rebellion has already become we will overthrow all the chads and stacy's yo this is literally the fucking wackest way to be like a mass murderer i'm just gonna put it out there okay like it's so fucking cringe too like it, on top of like how horrifying mass murder is but it's like literally fucking nuclear levels of cringe, too. Jesus Christ. While the rest of the world remained rightfully disgusted at the actions of Roger, the internet community of incels began to deify him, even referring to him as Saint Elliot. Posts and threads were created in support of Roger's actions, even blaming women for the crimes he'd committed. Throughout the incel community, many expressed shameless approval for Roger's actions. 
one of these individuals was Alec Manassian. Hello. Hi, how are you? Doing good, how are you? Good, good. Did you drink water? Sure. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. How are you feeling? I'm good. You're feeling okay? My name's Rob Thomas. Nice how to meet you. Hey, how are you? How are you? You doing okay? Hey, yeah. Yeah, you probably had better days than this, I guess, eh? Hey? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I am a little shaken, to be honest. A little shaken? No, like, it's not my usual day, obviously. Yeah, yeah, no, I can appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Alec. Do you mind if I call you Alec? Yeah, sure. Is it, what do your friends normally call you? Alec. Alec. Yeah. Uh, Alec, my name's Rob Thomas. So I want you to call me Rob from here on in, okay? Okay. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. Alec, uh, I want you to understand something. I'm a senior detective with the Toronto Police. Do you understand what that means? Uh, yes. You know I'm a police officer? Yes. Okay. I don't wear a, a, a uniform. Uh, I wear a, a, a suit and tie because of the type of work I, that I do. But although I'm in a, a suit and tie, I'm, I'm an actual police officer, okay? Um, and I'm the one of the senior investigators on this case, okay? I got called in for this, this, this specific case because of what's happened and the involvement and everything else that's been going on, okay? Uh, before we get started, I want you to know that we're being videotaped and audio taped. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Do you know what I mean by that? Yes. Everything I see and do is being captured. Exactly. Yeah. On on audio and video. Okay. Now, uh, here's what I want to do, uh, Alec. Um, I want to talk to you. Okay. Um, we're going to spend a, 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 a good deal of time together. Okay. okay. Um, it's important that I talk to you. All right. Um, this cop is applying what is known as the Don Draper technique. Why does he fucking sound like he's about to sell him, like, the next advertising campaign for Toyota? Like, look at how dapper I am. Do you like that? Yeah, I, I'm not like a regular cop. I, I've done a little bit of, um, uh, reading and I know a little bit about, um, involuntary... Uh, celibacy. C ce ce celibacy, right. So oh my god, these motherfuckers don't even know how to say celibacy, bro. Imagine being a fucking incel and not knowing how to say celibacy. Dude, oh my god. Oh, he doesn't even fucking know his own goddamn community's terminology. Are you fucking kidding me? Being celibate. Involuntarily yes. celibate. What does that mean? That means an... Celibacy means uh, uh, someone who never perform has a sexual intercourse. Dude, smartest guy on 4chan, literally. Like, fuck me, dude. Holy shit, uh, I can't. Involved. This is like when I found out that the way, the proper way to say tinnitus is tinnitus. Voluntary celibacy means this wasn't your choice. I you see. essentially are, uh, have been thrown into true forced loneliness and you are unable to lose your virginity. Right. This is especially uh, painful for uh, young males. Note the way that Alec describes the term involuntary celibacy. A great deal of the blame, if not all of it... The, to the person who said he sounds Persian, he's Armenian. That is shifted onto society or the people around the involuntary celibate. He uses terms like thrown into, unable to, and forced loneliness. Oh, typical Turk watching fucking Armenian mass murderer to get back. I see how it is. Motherfucker said he's Turkish. Okay, bro. This implies that the onus is not on the individual in this case, the incel but rather the people around him, or his current situation, whatever that may be. Right, 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 that makes sense. When did you first, sorry, you mentioned this and I forgot, when did you first go on to 4chan? 2014. 2014, and specifically when, in 2014? Like, this dude is, is obviously like, a sick freak, right? But low key, if he never went on 4chan, like, those people might, I mean, those people definitely wouldn't have been murdered, and maybe no one would have gotten fucking murdered. I just think about that. May 23, uh, 2014. And how were you able to remember that? Because I remember that was a uh, very significant day. 
Okay. What would you was what was that? Uh, that was when uh, Elliot Roger uh, decided to essentially uh, commit an uprising, a beta uprising, if you will, right. against the. Uh, Okay, I have to say something here. I'm going to issue another trigger warning. This is maximum cringe. And it also, like, if you were this person at some point, if you were on, like, a fucking 4chan message board or some shit, and you used to use terminology like this, this might be too hard to watch. Like, literally too hard to watch because it just, like, shows you potentially, like, what your old self looked like. And resembled. Also, Loki, this is why I always fucking specify that, like, no matter how crazy Minecraft stands get, like, it's never like this, okay? Because they're, they might get cringe, they might get crazy, they might do, like, mass targeted uh, threads where they call out every, like, microaggression or whatever, but, like, it still stems from a place of empathy. Misguided anger, but still. Their ideology still stems from a place of empathy. These motherfuckers, on the other hand, are full of hatred. Chad's in the Stacey's. It was a beta uprising. A beta uprising? Okay. Although he didn't uh, call it a beta uprising at the time. Uh, someone else who was inspired by him by the name of uh, Chris Harper called it a beta uprising sometime in, uh, actually, I believe it was October 1, uh, 2015. Uh, it was uh, Elliot Roger who was the, the father. Uh, Basically, the, the, the founding forefather of the, founding the, forefather. the entire movement. Right, right. So explain to me this movement. What's this movement about? It's like, look at how matter-of-fact he is in describing a beta uprising, bro. That's crazy. Basically, it's basically a movement of angry uh, insult. Bro, just believe in God, dude. Like, what the fuck are you doing? This is what I mean. Like, just literally, unironically, just fucking believe in uh, God. What the fuck? Please. Please, dude. Such as myself, who are unable to get laid, therefore we want to overthrow the uh, Chads, mm -hmm. which would uh, force the Stacys to be forced to uh, reproduce with the incels. Right. Take a moment and really consider the lunacy of what is being said here. This uprising he's talking about, this movement, is to eliminate all of the Chads who he previously established are men who incels feel have more sexual attractiveness to women, in order to force Stacy's or women who are sexually attractive, to reproduce with the incels. This narrative would be almost completely laughable if it wasn't for the glaring fact that a number of the incel community, estimated to be at or over 100,000 at the time of making this video, share similar viewpoints to Alec Manassian, and Elliot Roger. Okay, when you say incels, involuntary uh, celib celibate, celibate. So that's just a, a, sh a short for form for 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 fellas who can't uh, get laid, can't can't have sex. Right? <laughs> okay. And uh, if he says Kekistan, I'm shutting it off. What happened in the uh, Elliot Rogers uh, 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 uprising? What did he do? I know he. Uh, y used a uh, gun as well as a, a vehicle to um, convert the life status of certain individuals to a uh, death status. Right. Um, o only to uh, carry the message that um, incels uh, can't be oppressed. And, um, and then uh, what about um, Chris uh, Harper Mercer? What, uh, what did he do? Christopher Harper Mercer was a 26-year-old student at Umpqua Community College in Oregon who identified with the violent side of the incel movement. On October 1, 2015, he fatally shot an assistant professor and eight students, injuring another eight. After a shootout, Harper shot himself in the head. To this day, it is considered one of the deadliest mass shootings in Oregon history. He used a gun for uh, all of his murders. And were these fellas active on 4chan? Yes, they were. Have you ever communicated with these fellas? Uh, I actually have, as a matter of fact. Who, who did you communicate with? Autistic, by the way, just throwing that out there. Oh, never mind. He shouldn't go to jail. Sorry. Oh, fuck, dude. Oh, man. I didn't realize that, like, uh, he had autism. Fuck.
Sorry, boys. Wrap it up. Let's not watch the rest of this, honestly. Everybody knows, like, it's a shield. Uh, yeah, when you, when you throw up the autism shield, all of a sudden, you know, the, the fucking 10 people get unmurdered. Both of them, actually. Really? We discussed our uh, frustrations at um, society and being unable to get laid. And we were plotting a certain uh, timed strikes mm -hmm. on society in order to um, confuse and uh, shake the foundations just to put all the uh, normies in a uh, state of panic. Okay, and who would be a normie? Uh, normie means uh, normal people. That would be anyone who is uh, considered to be uh, normal by uh, the unfair standards of society. But not the Chads or Stacys. Chads, is Chads and Stacys are actually mm, above normies. Or at least Imagine not believing the very real systemic forms of violence all the way from like the structural violence of poverty to systemic racism, intergenerational trauma that comes from all these things, and then fucking turning around and being like, the real systemic problem is when women don't want to fuck me because I have the worst personality of all time. Incredible shit. I mean, honestly. God, I hate how these terms have been memed into unironically used terms today. I mean, yeah, I say fucking normies and shit, but I wouldn't be using it with a fucking adult, dude. Incel culture is Twitch culture? Yes. Mohammed Kanakin, full face of Kurdistan, incel culture is Twitch culture. Yes, this is true. This is why spending all day on forums and Discord servers is bad. Your reality becomes distorted 100%. Yeah. Another culture that is on Twitch, though, is the top of the hour culture. Or at the top of the hour, there's a 60 second ad break. And obviously it's uh, the best kind of culture, but the worst kind of culture at the same time. Best kind of culture, however, because you can avoid said ad breaks. Now you might be wondering how you can avoid said ad breaks. Instead of spamming five out of 10 transition or throwing up Pago tomato times. Instead of doing that, you could subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. You know, or an ad block or a VPN. These are ways you can avoid the ad breaks, which are coming right now. Here's the ad break. Inshallah, you must protect your life status. At least they think they're above normies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. So is it fair to say you've got Chads and Stacys up here, normies down here, and then you've got celebs who believe that they are being Incels. repressed. Incels. Incels. Celebs. Oh, sorry. Yes. Incels who believe they're being re 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 uh, uh, suppressed or repressed. Yes. And, and so as a result, even the playing field. Yes. The, you know, they, they, uh, they convert the Stacy's and Chad's from living to dead. And, and to so make that it, we come out on us to, on top. But yeah, it's more than, so is there, are, 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 Look so how the, fucking the serious he is when describing this shit, dude. It, what a fucking the, psycho. Get ready for this next bit, because if you didn't think what this guy was saying was insane before, you haven't heard anything yet. All of the uh, alpha males. All the alpha males. So the chads. Yes. So that's those are the people you, that, that that you want to kill. Yes. Okay. All right. And who else? Any uh, uh any of the Stacys who uh, do not wish to uh, give their love and affection to the incels. So they they you, they're a target as well. Yes. To be killed. Yes. Okay. And what about the normies? No, uh, yeah, nor normies. Yes, we uh, do. We do. We don't necessarily wish to. Uh, kill the normies but we do wish to uh, subjugate them uh, in order to make them understand that the um that our type is uh the more for the record this is why i was saying the like the sigma male shit although rooted in the same kind of weirdo uh environment is still preferable to the incel stuff because at least it like promotes better behavior you know what i mean like 
Yeah, I'm a Sigma male. I'm actually, you know, confident in my own, uh, in my own way. Like, it's still kind of weird because it's riddled with, like, weirdo POA, uh, uh, weirdo, like, POA mentality. But having said that, it's still, like, the bar is really low because incels are, like, really bad. It's a very dangerous, very violent, very dark ideology that sucks you in. But uh, the, the Sigma male shit's like still at least a little bit better. Superior line. Right, right. So when you say subjugate, what do you mean by that? Mean, meaning uh, either imprison them or put them in a lower position in society. Okay. All so right. that they acknowledge um, the incels or the uh, Pepe the Frog types as the more superior ones. <laughs> so, okay, so you... You're saying things that I'm, I'm not familiar with. So, sorry. So what's a Pepe the, Pepe uh, but we, uh, he's, he's, um, he's a mascot on 4chan. We, uh, he's a mascot? Yes. Oh, mascot on 4chan. Yes. No! I was, I was using a metaphor. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so uh, he's actually uh, worshipped uh, quite frequently. Oh, okay, okay. All right. So going back to the conversation with, with Chris and, um, and uh, Elliot, did you ha who did you have conversation with first? Let me ask you that. Elliot. Elliot. So how did you learn of Elliot? Because on um, on the we uh, private messaged each other on uh, Reddit yep. after I saw one of uh, his posts. That's it, dude. Shut it down. Shut it all down, okay? Fucking Reddit. Of course he got originally he saw this shit on Reddit. Shut it all down, dude. Literally shut it down, dude. Nothing good. Nothing good has happened on any of these websites ever, okay? Fuck, dude. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we just uh, talked about each other and got to know each other. This is literally a walking stereotype. We found each other very interesting. We both had the same uh, frustrations at society, right. despite being uh, separated by distance uh, so far apart. Right, right, right. Did you ever visit him? I uh, no, but I wish I could have. Yeah, yeah. Did he ever come and visit you? No, but I wish he did. Yeah, yeah. When specifically did you first contact or have co contact with Elliot? January of 2014. 2014. And... Uh, when did you stop having uh, communication with him? Uh, as soon as he was deceased. Okay. So, uh, his act, I, I know, took place in 2014, but I, I wasn't aware of the exact day. What day was it? May 23, uh, 2014. May 23rd. Yeah, you said that. Uh, so, when did you last speak to him? May uh, 20. May 20th. And so, what did he tell you? He told me that... Uh, he has to go, he must, he is on a very important mission, mm -hmm. and uh, he might not make it back alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what did you say to him? I uh, kind of had an idea in my head of what he was uh, planning, but I didn't want to uh, think it was true at the time, so I said, so I replied and said, uh, I wish you uh, good luck with that. Right on, okay. Okay, and, uh, yes. and uh, when did you learn that... Uh, what he had done. I saw it on the news later that night. Later on the, on the 23rd? Yes. Okay, and what did you think? Uh, I thought that I came to the understanding that this is the mission that he had to uh, carry out. Okay, all right. And anything else? I felt kind of uh, proud of him for uh, his acts of bravery. Okay, all right. And what about... Uh, how you started to, 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 to change your thinking. Was, was, any of the, was, was, that, was any of that going on? I was starting to feel uh, radicalized at that time. You were, okay. And when you say radicalized, what do you mean by that? Meaning I felt it was time to take action and not just sit on the sidelines and to just uh, fester in my own sadness. Right on, okay, all right. So what takes place next? As part of this, this, this growing radicalization. To be honest, uh, the planning didn't occur until about a month ago. Most of it was actually just thinking okay. and daydreaming. Okay, all right. So the thinking and daydreaming, when did that start? That started about a month after the rebellion in uh, May of 2014. Okay, so... So, I mean, so, so in June, I started uh, thinking about this stuff. And then that continued right up till about a month ago? 
Yes, which is when I uh, booked uh, the uh, van with the rider okay. in order to uh, use as a tool for rebellion. Okay, all right. So t t take me through that process. What was going through your mind and how was, you know, what were you thinking when you were doing all of this? What was going Motherfuckers will understand how <clears throat> people can, like, white dudes can radicalize on the internet because, like, women won't fuck them or because they said, like, mean things to them. But they won't understand how, like, further radicalization happens uh, in, in the Middle East as a consequence of, like, everyone's fucking houses being reduced to rubble, millions being displaced. Families being murdered, shit like that. I mean, this is like white ISIS. I was thinking that it was a time that I uh, stood up to the Chads and Stacys. Okay. And then, and then, so what happened? So this, tell me what takes place. So I uh, booked the van. Yeah. And then I just simply wait until uh, today. Yeah. And then. I go rent the van and then I uh, drive it, take it downtown to Toronto. Okay. And I just start using it as a weapon. Okay. All right. And and so when you say that, what, what do you mean by that? Meaning I it, the vehicle collided with uh, several pedestrians, some of who are no longer alive as a result. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. And. Uh, so, An often underlooked aspect to these police interrogations is the mental and emotional fortitude that the interrogating officer must have in order to achieve results. Over the past 12 minutes, Alex Manassian has told the officer a number of disturbing things. That to any sane person would trigger feelings of disgust and even hatred toward him. His radical ideas are also clearly so far steeped in delusion that a rational person would immediately dismiss them. The interrogating officer, however, in order to keep the interrogation... I think there's something wrong with us. As a collective. That, like, most average people don't understand this person when they're talking and describing these terms, but I know every single thing he's mentioned. Kind of fucked up. Like, I know everything. I, I know literally every single thing he's mentioned. That's so sad. ...and conversation flowing smoothly must treat Manassian and his ideas with a sense of normalcy and understanding in order to keep him talking. A feat that not too many people would be able to do in this situation when faced with someone so deranged. Yeah, that, that's a lot of information. Take me back to uh, a month ago. You said this is when this whole planning started? Yes. Okay. So about a month ago, where were you at that point? I was at Seneca College, and I decided to uh, phone Ryder and uh, book a, either a truck or a van with them. And they had a 10-foot a, a van uh, available, mm -hmm. so I figured that this is perfect. Mm -hmm. I can not, it's uh, big enough to have an effect, but not too big that I can't maneuver with it. Uh, so, the van was the perfect uh, medium size to use as my uh, weapon. Okay, so when do you leave Ryder? I wasn't looking at the time when I left, but I know I received the, the van before 1 p.m., although it was, uh, the booking was actually scheduled for 1. Okay, all right. And how long does it take you to get from Rider to Young Street. I went to Young, uh, to the beginning of Young. To, to the beginning of to uh, the beginning of the attack. Oh, to the near Young and Fitch. Yeah. I would estimate about uh, twenty to thirty minutes. Twenty to thirty minutes. Now, what are you thinking while you're in the van? Uh, I'm thinking that this is it. This is the day of retribution. Okay. And uh, anything else in your mind? Just that. That's okay. the, that's the only thing that's in my mind. It's just burning in my mind. Burning in your mind. Yeah. Okay, and uh, so let me ask you this, because this is really interesting. Why do you choose Young and Finch? 
I, I didn't choose Young and Finch in particular. I was driving down Young because I knew it would be a busy area. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as I saw there were uh, pedestrians, mm -hmm. I just decided to uh, go for it. Okay. And so where specifically were you in terms of your specific location? Where were you when you just decided to go for it? I was uh, at some traffic lights. Okay, where? Um, actually, I don't remember. The only reason, in fact, uh, if, if I hadn't, uh, I remember some other, uh, I, I had heard some other officer or mentioned Young and Finch before. That's the only reason I really remember it. Okay. But otherwise, I actually wouldn't have remembered you would that never it's remember. yeah, Young and Finch. I just knew that I started seeing a lot of people walking. Okay. Uh, it, it might, it might, to stand. Am I correct when I, when I say that you knew at least you were on Young Street? Yes. And you knew that you were. Because I specifically chose it beforehand. Because that's that's why. Because I even looked for that ramp from Highway Seven to Young. Right. Okay. Okay. So, nevertheless, you're at a, you're at a you're at a stoplight. You said. Yes. You're at, and now are you faced with a red light? You're stopped. Uh yes, but as soon as it turned green, I uh, started going. Okay, and uh, just walk me through this. Okay, step by step. So it turns green, and what are you thinking? I'm thinking that uh, this is it. I see all these people. It's uh, time to uh, go for it. Time to go for it. And what do you do? I uh, floor the pedal. Yep. I speed the van towards them, and I uh, allow the van to uh, collide with them. Okay. And the reason why you think this is the most terrifying guy we watched is because you know people like this. You talk to people like this on the internet every day, so it's even scarier to see. Like, in many ways, like, we've all been in circles that have a, a bunch of people like this. Not me? Motherfucker, you go on Reddit. The person that you fucking literally responded to on that subreddit thread has a high likelihood of being this person. Like, being exactly like this person. Actually, fuck that. As a matter of fact, half the time when you're talking to people, like, on Reddit, they are like this. Then what happens? Uh, some people get knocked out of the way. Some people roll over the top of the van. Okay. And then what, what happens? I uh, continue doing that until, um, I, in fact, actually, to be honest, the only reason I stopped my attack was because someone's drink got splashed on my uh, windshield, and I was worried that I would uh, crash the van anyway, so I decided, okay, now I, I wanted to do more, but I've kind of been foiled by a lack of visibility. So then that's when I uh, pulled, I turned right, and I pulled... And I saw the cops approaching, so I decided to pull over and get out of my van. Okay. How long do you travel from the moment that you you decide? You're this sensationalizing is it, Reddit. Most aren't like this. Yeah, I mean, obviously, this is the edge case of like, this is the final point of radicalization. Like, it doesn't get worse than that, dude. Like, the final point of radicalization. You you start off on Reddit. You go into like these edgy fucking dark circles on Reddit that suck you in. Okay. And then it pushes you further to like 4chan because you're looking for even more like. Uh, it, it pushes you further into like 4chan poll. And then there's like this never ending feedback loop. I mean, there's a lot of Reddit th uh, still. There were a fuckload of Reddit communities that, that churned out dudes like this on the regular. All of those, like, PUA insult forums, man. Shadows refuse to listen, but you literally banned insane incels during the John Coppenhaver video. Yeah, there were people... Yeah, there were some incels in here during that, where it was like, why do women choose to fuck guys like this instead of me? mount the sidewalk is that right yes 
to the time that you stop? How long in terms of the distance would that have been? About two traffic, two or three traffic lights. Two or three traffic lights. Okay. So you turn right at what street? I don't remember which street. I wasn't paying attention. Why do you turn right? Um, because I because there wasn't any convenient place to stop at Young, and I and like I said that there was a lack of visibility on my windshield. I could hear the cops coming anyway. So the the when I turned right, there was a convenient place to pull over on the sidewalk. Okay. Okay. And so you're now so you're you're, you're you you physically stop your vehicle. Yes. You physically stop. So you end the assault. Yes. Okay. Um, and you end it because you can't see. Yes. And you knew the cops were coming. Yes. Okay. And so then what happens at that point? Uh, I, I see a patrol car pull over and I hear the cops screaming at me to get out. So I get out and I uh, point my wallet at the cop in it with the intent for it to be confused at the gun so that I could be fatally shot. Okay. And was that something you were thinking about? Yes. I know. Mean, I mean, I, I, what I'm saying even, is even before had I uh, premediated as an attempted uh, suicide by cop. You wanted to. You wanted to be killed by the police. Yes. Okay. Um, can I ask why you decided to, to to equip yourself with a wallet, and not something else? Uh, I was worried. I was thinking about purchasing a toy gun, right. but I was kind of paranoid that some, for whatever reason, the Rydal rental company would ask to see my pockets or any bag if I chose to bring that, so I decided to go as stealthy as possible so no one suspects anything. Okay, all right. Nevertheless, you get out of the, the van, the officer, or, or oh, sorry, uh, it, correct me if I'm wrong, because I want to make sure I get this right. You get out of the van because the officer orders you out? Yes. Okay. Uh, and you want to uh, you want to die by, uh, by, by suicide by police, uh, so you point your wallet at him? Yes. Okay, and, and uh, do you say anything to the officer? Uh, I actually... This is how you know a lot of this, like, incel shit still very America-centric. Not North America, but, like, USA-centric. Because that's, like, America behavior. But I guess suicide by cop exists in Canada, too. But, like, you know this motherfucker thought, like, oh, they'll immediately kill me. If I get out of my car... With, uh, with a wallet in my hand to make it seem like I have a gun. And the reality is, yeah, they, in America, they very likely would have killed him. He told him that I had a gun in my pocket, which was untrue. Right. Uh, then I had to, I, twice I stuck my left hand in my uh, pocket and attempted to do this just to uh, provoke a uh, reaction. <laughs> wow, so smart, incel. Point a wallet, five heads, so superior to other societal members. Okay. Yeah, he's like so proud of his actions too. There is this vibe that you get when you encounter an incel on the internet who is like riddled with Dunning-Kruger where they feel so confident in their rhetoric whenever they're talking about an area of like their own expertise even if it's like incredibly weirdo cringe shit like the knowledge over Kekistan, you know what I mean? Where they're just like, heh <laughs> Of course, I knew everything about, uh, you know, the incel is this, and the Stacy and the Chad, and the normies. And it's like, it's like, you're not smart, dude. You just, like, you're literally tailoring yourself off of, like, savant characters that you've seen in movies, okay? You're behaving in this way, thinking that you're, like, you know, like, autistic Sherlock Holmes, like, and you might have autism, okay? So that might be one reason where you, like, where you... I guess, like, thought that this is this character uh, resembles you or something. Or Hannibal Lecter or some shit. But it's, it's fucking ridiculous. Like, you're just, you're just a dumb motherfucker, dude. Autism as a diss? That's not a fucking diss. This dude had autism. And also, I'm saying that, like, savant and very specific types of characters that are, like, neurodivergent in their in their um in the way that they're written and uh psychopathy and, and sociopathy in the way that you see in like modern movies and shit is something that a lot of people 
uh, look up to and like tailor their own character around. But in real life, you just sound like the type of dude who says, you know, uh, I wanted to take down the Kekistani uh, Chads and Stacys. Like that's what you come across as. But there's that still, there's still that like weird condescension in the tone of voice. Uh, that, uh, he, unfortunately he didn't react. Right. So then I ended up being ordered to the ground. So I knew at that point he's not going to shoot me. So, uh, I've lost. So I just, I had no choice but to just get on the ground. I'm going to ask you this, because uh, it's important. Um, Ten people died here today. Um, Fifteen people were seriously injured. Um, I think it's important to ask how you feel about that. I feel like uh, I accomplished my mission. You feel like you accomplished your mission? Yes. Okay. If the families of those people who were murdered and who were injured were in this room right now, what would you say to them? I honestly don't know what I would say. Would you apologize? I honestly don't know. No. While it's true that not all who identify with the incel community have the violent fantasies of men like Alec Manassian and Elliot Roger, it is still alarming how many of these radical ideas are perpetuated, not just by attacks, but by support for these attacks and the men who carried them out. They can be compared to a terrorist cell, whose ideas and delusions are insatiable, and who feel justified in their violent actions against those who they feel deserve punishment. Perhaps even more dangerous than their outward ideals, though, is their inner dialogue, one which absolves them of any role in the situation they find themselves in, instead heavily shifting the blame to society rather than coming to terms with their own shortcomings. Alec Manassian pleaded guilty to 10 counts of first-degree murder and 16 counts of attempted murder. His trial lasted for six weeks and was done virtually due to the COVID-19 pandemic. A judge ruled him guilty, and he is expected to serve, at the very least, a life sentence. Absolutely. Madame Justice Anne Malloy rejected the defense argument that Alec Manassian was not criminally responsible, finding that not only did he know legally what he was doing was wrong, but also that he morally knew what he was doing was wrong, finding him guilty of 10 counts of first degree murder and guilty of 16 counts of attempted murder. Now, uh, Malloy uh, spoke to exactly what happened that day. She refused to name Manassian in her judgment, only referring to him as John Doe, saying that she was acutely aware media coverage is exactly what he sought from the start. Malloy said that while she's... I mean, he misses a bunch as well. Like, he was going for way more. Look at this. Really aware media coverage is exactly what he sought from the start. Thank fucking God, Malloy dude. Malloy said that while she's accepted... That autism spectrum disorder is a mental illness within the section of the criminal code that deals with the not criminally responsible defense. These were his victims, by the way. So fucked up, dude. She said Manassian chose to run down innocent people that day. She said he planned the attack, showed no remorse nor empathy for his actions, and knew that his plan constituted first degree murder, which is why his plan was to die by cop that day. She said Manassian sought fame and notoriety and had been fantasizing about a crime like this for over a decade and admitted after the mass murder, quote, I feel like I accomplished my mission. Fucking Christ, dude. Is the common capital punishment justified? No, dude. It, like, it doesn't do shit. That is not going to do anything.